Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today I want to talk about a big huge subject. It's insomnia. It's a subject that not only parents have to deal with, but also kids have to deal with. More and more, I have parents uh, calling me, emailing me, texting me, and saying that their child is having a lot of difficulties getting to sleep at night. So the first things that I usually ask them are basic things. Number one, are they pay playing video games until late in the night? And if that's the case, you need to throw away the phones, the video games, all of that kind of stuff, at least an hour to two hours prior to them going to sleep. It activates the brain too much and, and not in a good way. Okay, so it will keep them so that they're not able to fall asleep. So ditch all of the uh, social media stuff, all the phones, all the video games, everything. The other thing is I ask about diet. A diet high in sugar or fast food, if they're drinking a lot of sodas, that also is going to keep them awake at night. Particularly if they're drinking sodas late at night, of course the caffeine is going to keep them as a stimulant. So that's another thing, they need to look at diet. They need to have plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables in their diet. They need to have fiber. They need to have, you know, balanced food. And, you know, I, I understand how you, there are times that parents are just overly tired and exhausted and you take your kids to a fast food restaurant, but you don't want a steady diet of that because that will definitely affect their sleep as well. So you want to look at those types of things and what, um, you know, different things that you can do. One thing that is really helpful to do is to talk to your child, you know, about 30 minutes before they go to, uh, to bed or something. And to just ask them some questions about their day, but try to keep it light and try to keep it happy. The other thing is you want to make sure that all the lights are out in their room. Um, interestingly, if there's a light on in the room, that will affect their sleep. Some kids, they actually like a mask over their eyes so they can keep out any type of light uh, that may be coming through the window or whatnot. But there's also, and I talked about this in a blog, and it's called Taking Baths and Using Bath Salts. So let's talk a little bit about that and the power of those. Number one, bath salts. <clears throat> there's three main ones that I'm going to talk about. The first one is Epsom salt. Now it's interesting that Epsom salt is called a salt because it's not a salt. It is actually composed of magnesium, oxygen, and sulfur. Now your skin loves sulfur by the way, it's the dominant element in your skin and so it's very good for the skin. But <clears throat> when you put a bath with Epsom salt, um, it actually helps to calm and relax the person because as it dissolves they are very tiny molecules and it penetrates into the skin. When your child is feeling anxious or when you're feeling anxious, okay, the magnesium, which is a mineral in your body, gets depleted and gets depleted very quickly. And what takes over is the adrenaline, okay? You don't want high levels of adrenaline in your body because that puts you into the fight or flight mode. Magnesium is a very powerful mineral that actually helps to calm us down. That's why Epsom salts are so powerful and people say, I always take a bath and I always use Epsom salt. It's magnificent, it's miraculous, it calms me down. Well, it's because of the magnesium in it. That really helps. So that one helps, and it, like it penetrates and it will build up the magnesium again in your body and help your child to relax. Another one is Dead Sea Salts. The Dead Sea Salts are loaded with all different types of minerals as well as magnesium. So that also helps, but mag uh, Dead Sea sal Salts help with water retention and with cellulite. Now, when you're under a lot of stress, oftentimes like when you drink something, a soda or, or even water, you can get bloated very quickly because of the high adrenaline that is, is in your bloodstream and it's in your body. Okay, so by adding the Dead Sea salts, it helps with that water retention and it helps to get rid of that water, that excess water. Now, if you're into oils, the um, therapeutic grade essential oils, you can also use orange oil or tangerine oil as well. You can put a few drops in the bathtub or you can put it on the bottoms of your feet. That helps also with water retention, but you want to reduce that water retention because by reducing it, you reduce the stress levels and it reduces the high blood pressure and everything else. And Dead Sea Salts, for those of you who have cellulite, I think I was born as a baby with cellulite, it actually helps with cellulite. Okay, the third salt is Himalayan salt. Now, I usually get the coarse Himalayan salt. And by the way, I buy all of my salts at the San Francisco Bath Company, 
or the San Francisco Salt Company, excuse me. It's in San Francisco. They just changed owners. I've ordered from them for over 10 years. Um, I've always loved, loved, loved their salt. Their Epsom salt is actually a pharmaceutical grade. That's why I, 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 it's a really pure, gorgeous salt. Okay, so I get the Dead Sea salts from them, but I also get the Himalayan, but I get the coarse Himalayan salts from them. Now, the coarse Himalayan salts, when you put that in your bath, it will take about 15 minutes for it to, to dissolve, depending on the heat of your bath. But Himalayan salt is also loaded with a lot of different important minerals. Now, one thing that it does is it opens up the, uh, the, excuse me, it opens up the arteries and the veins and allows the blood to flow through so that your circulation is better. So when you're adding the magnesium, the circulation of the magnesium, it circulates to all parts of the body much, much better. And it actually has a tendency to really calm you down. By adding these three salts, and I would probably suggest maybe a half a cup of each salt in your bath, let me tell you, you are going to be exhausted. You're gonna be very tired. All of the stresses and the strains and the worries and the anxiety and everything that you're feeling is pretty much washed away in this salt. Try these with your kids at night, particularly if you know that they have some big huge tests coming up or something that's going on in their lives that are causing them to not be able to sleep. If they can't sleep, the anxiety and the depression and everything else escalates. All right, by taking these so that by taking these baths, they're extraordinarily powerful. If you go on my blog, you can read even in more detail the breakdown of all these different salts and what they do. Now, I add different um, oils, essential oils. You can add those to the bath. If you want to have a detox bath, okay, let's say that your child is getting good night's sleep and everything, they want to kind of detox out all the toxins out of their body. Actually, the Dead Sea salts and the Himalayan salts do that, but you can add one more thing. It's ginger powder. You can get ginger powder. I have all the links. You can get it at Atlantic Spice Company, which is back in Massachusetts. That's usually where I get it. You want to put no more than a third to a half a cup of ginger powder in your bath. And you can do it just by itself without the salts. You will start to sweat, all right? And that's what you want. You're sweating out the toxins. Now, if you don't sweat, that's usually a red flag that your lymphatic system is clogged. There are two ways that you can get that lymphatic system working again. Number one, by walking. And by the way, exercise really helps increase those endorphins. So that's the feel good, one of the feel good hormones in your body. That will help your child to actually feel good, to help, to help them to relieve stress as well. But these baths are very powerful to help with insomnia. Okay, so walking really helps to open up the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is important because that's where your entire immune system is. The other way is through essential oils. Now, let's pretend that this is your big toe and this is your second toe. Right in here, this place right in here, if you massage it and it hurts, if there's a little bit of pain involved, it means your lymphatic system is clogged. You need two oils to open it up lemongrass and myrtle and you need therapeutic great essential oils meaning you either need them from young living or doTERRA take about two or three drops and massage in there then go back and take that um, bath in the ginger powder and then you will start sweating okay and then you will release all of those toxins now with the salts, as I mentioned before, they're so powerful that they will release those um, toxins out of your body automatically. You don't have to do a detox bath to get some of those toxins released. So let me leave you with a bonus um, fact. And this is also very, very powerful. After you've taken this bath, this relaxing bath, after you've ditched all the, you know, your cell phones, all the video games, all the rest of it, put on some soothing music. The one that I absolutely love is Pachelbel's Canon with Ocean Sounds. So you, everybody's familiar with Pachelbel's Canon, but it has the ocean sounds, and there's something that is incredibly soothing and relaxing and relieves the stress when you hear the sounds of the ocean. Also, when you hear the sounds of the rain or anything that is found in nature. So look on Amazon for that um, D, uh, CD and play it and have your children play it. You will be astounded at how they relax and how this helps them with their insomnia. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.